people before profit. Uh, Deputy Reed Smith. I'm sharing Sorry. my time with uh, Deputy McBarry, and if I ask Sorry. questions, I'm happy to have them answered if I run out of five minutes in writing. Um, I can't believe the answer you've just given to Deputy Murphy, uh, Deputy Humphreys, because it's outrageous. You just uh, patronised her for a good section of the time by telling her this document tells you how to sneeze, how to distance, how not to, uh, how to mask up, how to have PPEs. We've been listening to that for eight weeks, and during the course of that eight weeks, many of the deputies in this House have been inundated with complaints from workers about the lack of protocol and safety on their sites. Uh, I asked you at the beginning of this month for a list of the number of complaints into the Health and Safety Authority. You told me 122. You wrote to Paul Murphy yesterday, Deputy Paul Murphy, who's not here now, and told him there were 200. And in your answer you say, it has not been necessary for the Health and Safety Authority to carry out any physical inspections. How do they know if they didn't inspect them? Did they pick up the phone and say to the employer, how are you getting on there? Do you know about sneezing and masking and PPE and distancing, because if you ask me, that's what this document, we've all waited for bait, with bated breath for this, haven't asked you for what you're going to do about the lack of protocol at work, we get that document and it is what you just said. And it is full of caveats. There are two parallel universes here, Minister. There's the world that workers live in, and there's the world that you live in, and the CIF lives in, and the, the IBEC live in, and they are very, very different. And I want to tell you why they're different. Go and read The Guardian today, and read about workers in the meat factories. And I hope it pulls the strings of your heart, because it pulls mine. When you listen to those workers talking about the experience they've been through, where one worker at least has died, and there's been hundreds of them infected. Uh, I know I got it into the factory, one worker said. If the disease was in the animals, this place would have closed. But for workers, the factory can do what they like. These workers feel intimidated, are vulnerable, and they are not being treated with dignity and respect. There's no checking of temp temperature, no masks, no two meter distancing. And when they asked for masks, they were told no. Many of them are migrants and because of the low pay, they live in communal housing. And the risk of the disease spreading among them is, is very, very great indeed. Today I got an, an answer back from the HSE and they tell me that they've set up an outbreak control team in the meat industry this day one week ago and it has met once. I am really disturbed by the lack of urgency from your department on the issue of workers' rights. You can talk all you like about the need for industry and businesses and all to resume, and they absolutely do, and I know tens of thousands of workers are anxious to get back to work. But for God's sake, bring them back to work in safe conditions. And workers need to know that there is legislation that covers them. It's called the Health and Safety and Welfare at Work Act of 2005, Section 27E. If you feel unsafe at work, you can, under that legislation, walk away from your workplace without fear of intimidation or dismissal because your workplace is not protected. And if you were protecting those workplaces, you wouldn't have given us a document that is full of caveat, is like a sieve, because in it, it says many times that employers, in as far as practical, should provide masks if they can, that facilities should prov be provided if they are reasonably practical. And you repeatedly told many deputies here today that the HSA would inspect. They haven't inspected one out of 200 complaints at the height of the COVID pandemic in this country. In your own admission, they haven't gone to work. one workplace. You refuse to answer Deputy Murphy and other deputies how many extra inspectors would be provided. I don't believe you have the interests of employees at heart. Your document, your interest is all about the employer. I've just come off a radio interview with Tom Parlin. Not once did he mention the employer or the responsibility of his members. He consistently mentioned the personal responsibility of workers to mask up, to use the PPEs, to socially distance. How, if you have two construction workers walking across a four foot wide plank, can they keep a two metre distance between them? They can't do it. And make no mistake about it, when the construction industry resumes, the pressure will be on, get it built, get the cement in, get that done. And there will be breaches. Even travelling to work will be a breach. We have rushed to get the Leaving Cert cancelled, but we've no problem sending over 100,000 workers from all parts of the country back into very uncertain 
unsafe conditions without any redress, no proper redress. And I don't believe this document has either teeth nor power to do what's required, and it's your responsibility.